Hello. Um, so we're going to start our portrait here. And in your kit, you all should have had a, it's hard to see probably in the video, but you all should have a piece of paper with your um, drawing on there. Um, now, what I want you to do actually a little bit before you, um, before you begin painting, because we didn't have a chance to do this ourselves, is I want you to, I want you to kind of put the plastic over the, the photograph, and I want you to kind of study how um, my actually my daughter helped me draw these out. So how we um, traced your changes in light, color, and structure. So you may be asking yourself, why did we put a line around this faint shadow here, or why did we put a, a line up in there? Some of the more obvious ones, like the highlight on her nose, you might realize why we did that, or eyebrows and so on. So really what we want to do is we want to put a very detailed map of all the changes in light, color, and structure, okay? So when you put this plastic uh, over your photograph, you should see um, those changes. So those are gonna be very important in getting the accuracy in your painting that we're gonna to wanna to have, okay? Now, I, I recommend strongly that you don't keep the plastic on your photo when you paint, even though I want you to look at it at first. When you go to paint, I want you to actually take this off, okay? You set that off to the side. Once again, I've got my brush that came with the um, watercolors and I had washed it out from when I did the sphere. So I washed it with a little soap and water. I made sure that it dried before I put it back in the pan. This is the same set of watercolors that I used before. So you can see that they're pretty clean now because I rinsed them under the sink. Um, so you can rinse them off and let them dry before you close them up. I've got my two glasses of water here. Um, I always like to have kind of a mixing glass and then a glass that I could use to kind of uh, for if I don't want as much color in the in the ink or in the paint there. Uh, I have a little piece of copy paper that I'm going to test some of my colors on. I'm going to have my photograph in my hand, very important. I also have a couple paper towels here that I'm going to use throughout my painting process. So for this first video, Really all I want to do is I want you to kind of study and find the, the darkest parts of your painting. Almost black, okay? So if you have black or near black areas in your painting, and we all will, we'll all have them somewhere because of the light and the contrast in there. And I want you to be very particular about um, when you decide something is black and when it's not. Like, for example, it may be hard to see, but if we look in this shadow here, along um, her chin here, it is getting almost black. But there's a couple little highlights that are embedded in that dark area that I really want you to withhold making black, okay? If we go in this area right here, this dark area of shadow on her hair, okay? There are some streaks of darker colors, but there are also some slightly lighter versions there too. We have to be very, very observant when we do this painting so that we, um, we don't start putting information in there that is either incorrect or is misplaced or whatever. So before you switch to make a new color and to add it to your painting, um, I'd like you to really be confident that you've got the right color there, okay? Um, one of the things that, uh, that people often make a mistake of is just that, is that they're not looking carefully enough at the changes, even though they're subtle. And then they go and they just paint over the whole thing and they wonder why it looks so flat and it doesn't look lifelike. So uh, very important piece of that. Now, um, in the next video, I'll show you how to punch holes in paper. And then you're gonna be able to hover the paper over the, um, over the, the photograph and identify colors. For this first um, session though, I, all I really want you to do is to focus on your very, very dark colors, okay? Now, if we were back in the studio with our, water or with our oil paints, we wouldn't have black. So I don't want you to immediately go to black. So let's grab, let's grab some of this violet here. Let's grab some blue. 
Okay, we're gonna grab a little bit of red here, this deep dark red. Okay, and a little bit actually yellow, because yellow is the com is the uh, complement of violet. Okay, now if we feel like it's not quite dark enough, that's where you're gonna go in and add just a little bit of that black. So don't just grab straight black and try to make it a shortcut. I want you to create a black as best you can and if you feel like you have to get a little bit darker, then that's fine. Um, we can use black to supplement that, okay? On uh, Allie's hair here, I've noticed that um, it's kind of a little bit of a warm black, okay? So here I've got this color mixed up. Now, I can pretty confidently, because I know that it's black, I can come in here and make sure that my brush is not dripping or anything. We don't want to make a mess here. But I can come in and I can I can paint her um, her pupil right there. All right. Uh, looks like I can paint her other pupil right here. Okay. Now these are going to really stick out at first because obviously I'm on white paper right here. Already I might want to um, add a little bit of water to just take away some of that uh, darkness there. And sometimes I even hold it up to the photograph to see if um, the color's correct. And this is looking pretty good. Okay. And you may, <coughs> excuse me, you may be asking yourself, um, wow, my eyebrows aren't that dark or my, you know, my hair isn't that dark or that light or whatever. You have to keep in mind that you're doing a painting that is a specific light. Okay. So, a lot of times the light and the exposure of the photograph um, will, will help kind of dictate how light or dark something actually is. So I can make little adjustments um, as I go through here. And I'm sticking with the plan, trying to look at the photograph. Now I can paint these in, again, as I said, pretty confidently without having to do much blending or anything, really, in the beginning. It's just kind of a, notice how I'm just kind of grabbing a couple different colors. Here I want to get pretty dark. If I get too violet, I'm going to add that yellow just to counteract that. Okay, now I can come into this area here and, again, really study that photograph. And I can get pretty dark down in here. Just not a lot of light getting in here. And I always want to check with that photo before I put any movements down, especially with watercolor. Because if, I, if I've got something that has to be light and I accidentally paint it dark, uh, chances are I'm not going to get that back. Okay, so I can, I can literally take this color, got to be careful and paying attention, Okay, all the way along here. And along the side of her face here, I could turn my turn my paper like so. Okay, and I can come just along the side here. Kind of a sharp line right now, but that's okay because I can I can actually blur that out later. Okay, so I want to get just some of these deep dark colors in here. Figure out what I did right here. Um, I'm gonna highlight through here. If I'm getting low on color, I don't want to stretch it out and, and add keep adding water because it's just gonna get lighter. So I want to go back. I want to be diligent about going back, putting in some new color. And again, I'm using that black really as a supplement. Mainly, um, okay, so I can come in through here and make sure you find out where I'm at here. And 
if you know what a paint by number is and many of you probably don't because it was actually kind of a popular thing back in the 50s and 60s but might be worth googling a paint by number and what a paint by number is is just a a, a photograph or a, a painting of something or a drawing of something that has been posterized like this here and um, and then they the company will break it into posterized like that and then assign a number to it with a color that is for that number and then you can take it and you can paint each color that corresponds with a with a number and by the time you're done with it it looks exactly like what you wanted it to look like so we're doing a version of that um, we're just doing it um, by hand we don't have numbers and we have to make our own colors so Okay, so I can place in I don't know if you can hear our neighbor's dog barking, but that's the beauty of uh, doing demos from home. So what are you going to do? Okay, so I can put in like a little sliver here. Again, I don't want to put colors in that aren't there. So I don't want to add color to an area anywhere that does not correlate or correspond with the photograph. So I, I really try to stop myself from adding color, dark color, when it's just not there. And you might be tempted to do that. You might say, you know what, let me put a little bit here and a little bit there. Not a good idea because you're going to end up realizing that it wasn't the right color and it, you're not gonna you're not gonna be happy with the result okay up in here I've lightened it just a bit so right along her part here I can add um, some dark here that's not gonna hurt me just like that and then uh, gotta study this for a second Kind of comes in like that. Just adding some of these low lights here, these darks. And again, we don't want to, um, we want to be careful not to add any color. It doesn't belong there. Now I'm going to add some of these um, lights here. Or these darks, I should say. I could always add these later too. Um, so some of these things, if, if you miss them the first time, it's not a huge deal. You can always add them later. On her eyebrow here, especially where it's um especially where it's surrounded by lighter color i want to be very careful i want to stick with my drawing here kind of stay in the line so to speak and again you could always come back and add like in uh in this eyebrow here i didn't quite finish i'm going to go a little bit lighter on the rest of it because it starts to kind of thin out a little bit. And I'm, again, I'm just using the water here to kind of thin this out like so. Okay. Um, she does have dark uh, brown eyes, so I'm going to Take a little bit of this kind of dark brown here. And again, I want to I don't want it to just be random dark brown. I want it to be the color it needs to be. Take a little bit of this yellow, a little bit of that. Maybe come over here. Sometimes you gotta add a little bit of water. It looks like it was a little too violet, so I'm gonna add a little bit. There we go. Maybe a little bit of red. Bring it back over here. That's pretty good for now. 
Okay, so now I can go in on this iris here. And again, I could always add um, more color later. You want your iris to be round. So even if my drawing is off just a little bit, um, you're gonna wanna make sure that it's round because if your iris isn't round, then something's probably wrong. So we wanna make sure that those irises are round. So even if my drawing is off just a bit, please correct that. Once that dries, you'll be able to see the difference. And I can go in again, and, and I will later in this in this demo, not today, but my next demo, I can go in. I'm gonna add a little bit of that black because in this case, um, the the eye, eyeliner and I um, eyeliner and mascara and stuff are typically black. So I mean, you can go pretty black on that. Okay, so again, now I wanna come in here. This lower one here, I want to go just a little bit lighter there, okay? Test it out out here. I'm gonna dab that just a bit. Don't want it quite that dark. So I'm just taking a new sheet of paper, uh, paper towel and just dabbing that down a little bit. I got a little dark on that. And again, I may decide that I want it that dark, but for now I just wasn't too sure. So I'm gonna, so I can put in some of these eyelashes, just as a little kind of peck there. Be careful with your eyelashes. You don't wanna, you know, just invent them too much. You really kind of look at your eyelash and make sure that you're putting in it the right shape and the right amount of them, you know, they can get pretty cartoony pretty fast. So let's look closely at that. Um, in fact, if I were you, I'm gonna grab this. Allie, what are we at time-wise? 17 minutes. Okay. So I know you guys can see better than I can, but there are some cases where I wanna grab a uh, magnifying glass and just make sure I know what I'm looking at before I go ahead and paint that. So we gotta come in about like this, kinda come up over the top, and then it does get a little bit more faint, so like that. Okay, we're gonna put in some of these eyelashes and again, I don't want to fake this too much. There's the upper lid, okay, that we could put in. Like that, get a little bit darker on that. That upper lid just kind of nestles up there. Like that. Okay, same thing over here. There's that upper lid kind of tucked away. It's hard to see. And I'll get, I'll get some more of that skin color in there later. Okay, want to lighten this up a bit more, kind of like that. And then I can come in and there's going to be a lower lid that I'm going to have to paint, but I'm not going to get to that yet. I want to be looking at that photo at everything I do. So I don't want to just make stuff up. I want to and if you look at my palette over here, just to do those darks, look at all these different things I'm doing here. Why? Because I wanna, I wanna make sure that I'm doing this correctly. There's kind of like a little buildup of eyelash right there, so I want to get that in. You know what? While I'm at it, there's a, a usually a little bit darker around your iris. Okay, like so. Darker colors around the edge of your iris. And if you got the colors out, you might as well do them real quick, okay? Um, so I got a lot of the darks. Um, so if we look in here, I've got all these blacks that are up in here. Down in here, these are dark, but they're not quite the black I was looking for, okay? 
I've got this dark along the edge of her face. Her eyebrows are fairly dark. They're not black, but they're fairly dark. And then we've got the dark, especially in the shadowed areas. Got the dark spots there. I hit the little dark spot here, right there. I know this is pretty dark, but I'm gonna hold off on that till next video. So as I look at this, the darks in her lips aren't black. So I'm gonna do that separately. Some of these uh, browns and deep dark browns are dark, but they're not the real, real dark, okay? So I just wanted this video today to be um, just the darks that I'm talking about. So if we take a look at this, okay, we see that I've just cherry picked some dark colors, mostly black and some deep dark browns. My next move and my next video that I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna show you how to get into getting this dark here, some of the darks up there. I'll get into her hair here a little bit more. Maybe I'll do the lips. And then the next run is gonna be kind of going through the darks that are in her skin. So we've got like this color is much darker than that color. And that's gonna be true for everybody that has light on them. So, um, so that's kind of the next stage. This is fairly easy in the sense that um, you're, you're almost just kind of coloring in or lining in your darks. But again, very, very important. Do not, if you see that something is dark and then something next to it's a little bit lighter, don't paint them the same color, okay? A great example is like right here. I know it might be hard to see in the video, but it's very dark under her earring there and it's a little lighter to the right of it on the edge there. A lot of people will paint that all one color without stopping to realize that. When they do that, that just starts a bad habit. And then if you start using that in your face, it won't be long before it doesn't look like you and you'll get frustrated. So for now, um, just I'm gonna do like kind of short videos rather than really long ones. I'm gonna let you guys get started when you get your materials um, to kind of just get your feet wet and get some dark lines in there. And then, um, uh, Monday or Tuesday, I'll, I'll uh, download another video or I'll do another video on YouTube and then that will be kind of the next phase and we'll just kind of take it that way throughout the process um, until we finish. So uh, don't forget Monday, uh, I'll, I'll post this video this weekend, but this coming Monday we're going to have another collaborate and see how you guys did on your spheres or whatever you decided to do. So thank you. Have a good weekend. Take care.